Building your first pedal board can be really overwhelming. What patch cables do I use? What power supplies do I use? What pedals? What order? And then what pedal board? I'm just gonna tell you what to do. This is what we're building today and we're gonna give it away. It's gonna cover all your needs and get you playing as fast as possible. We're gonna need some ingredients for this board, Velcro, painter's tape, some scissors, a measuring tape or a ruler, patch cables, a power supply, a pedal board, and of course, guitar pedals. I have worked on countless guitar rigs from famous celebrity guitarists to normal people and everything in between. And there are five common guitar effect styles and types that are the common denominator between all of those rigs. This is where you should start. The first and most essential effect for any electric guitar rig is overdrive, and there's no better representation of that circuit and sound than the Tube Screamer topology. It's an amazing pedal to turn on for leads and solos or an overdriven crunch. To represent this kind of sound in this rig, we're going to use the 3 Series Screamer. Next up, we need a second dirt. Most people need something a little heavier. I recommend a distortion here and this is gonna be represented by a rat. Super classic, it stacks really well here. You can even set this up as a second overdrive, turn these both on and then create distortion. And we're gonna use the three series distortion in this spot. Next up, and in order of signal chain by the way, I would insert a modulation pedal. Just do something that does classic chorus. And honestly, analog, old school boss chorus sounds Anything that has that 80s vibe is super trendy right now and really powerful in any style of music. We're gonna use the three series chorus in this section. Next up in the signal chain, you need an echo slash delay. This is something that repeats the note that you play. I love these old school kind of simple digital delays because they, they can be really versatile. They have good controls, they're not overwhelming. We'll use the three series delay, which is based off of this in its place. <laughs> Nick, did you know this is signed by the designer? What? The, the designer, I hunted him down. The guy that, that made this. So cool. It's not a big deal. It's, it's not. Awesome. It's, it's fine. You don't have to talk about it. I love it. I mean, you can talk about it more if you want. It's great. And last in the signal chain, not as essential, but I feel like it'd be a crime to not put it here. It is the effect of reverb. I have always had a reverb pedal on my board and I feel like when it's not there, I'm a horrible person. I feel like people hate me. I feel like I'll never achieve anything. So I don't want you to feel that way. I want you to have a reverb on your pedal board. We're gonna use the three series reverb as well. Oh, I need a tuner. I hear you. I don't wanna put one on the board. I'm just gonna use a poly clip. We're gonna throw it in for free with the board. Sometimes you just put the tuner on your headstock and move on. Not everybody has to have a pedal tuner. I'm sick of the discrimination. My opinion is not fact. It is my fact. You may have a different choice of things that you enjoy or are drawn to, but I think in this situation it'd be fun to get another professional on the line and see what she thinks. Let me call up Emily from Get Offset. She demos a ton of stuff and in a lot of ways knows more than me about some of the brand's offerings in this price range. I want to ask you your five recommendations for a beginner building a board. A beginner? Uh, well, I think you got to start with a tuner, or is that not fun enough? You, that, it's all you. I want another professional opinion. Sure, yeah. I think you got to start with a tuner. I know people like headstock tuners. Not everybody has to have a pedal tuner. Pedal tuner. And more accurate. Yeah. Uh, so for that, I really like the new Pictronix tuner. It's small, it's like under a hundred bucks, or maybe it's around a hundred dollars. It's got top jacks. I haven't seen this. This is why I'm calling you. I literally haven't seen that. <laughs> when it comes to patch cables, the things that connect your pedals together on the board, there's a lot of options. So let's start at the most expensive, high quality option that we've used here a lot. These are by Lava. 
a handmade, hand soldered cable. These are sturdy. These are very sturdy. I can pull on these. I can unplug and plug them up a million times, but you're gonna pay a lot more. You're gonna pay $20 per cable for this kind of thing. This is by Planet Waves. This is one of the most impressive cables I think you can buy if you're serious about wanting something nicer. These are nice. These are like pro cables. Same thing, so soldered. We'll call this soldered high quality. The middle ground you see a lot of, I'm honestly not a fan of. We've used them a lot over the years and they are solderless patch cable kits. Basically you get a bunch of ends like this and you get a big spool of cable. You take these scissor cutters and you put together your cables. These ends are designed so that kind of hook it up. Take a screwdriver and you screw in the cable here and it grounds it. And so do they work? Yes. Have I used them? Yes. Have I used them with success? Yes. But every problem I can remember on my pedal boards has been solderless cables. And I ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Next is what I would call affordable, not repairable patch cables. The not repairable is not a negative, it just is what it is because they're so affordable. But nowadays, two companies make really good versions of these. There is the Planet Waves version. And if you notice, it looks a lot like form factor like this. You just can't take it apart. So if you have an issue or it faults out, you're gonna throw it away and get another one, but they're affordable. But I'm gonna go with these. These are some of my favorites. I've never had issues with them and they're really low profile, so they fit your pedals closer together. These are the flat patch cables by Ernie Ball. Two of my three pedal boards use these and they're great. All right, what, what's after that tuner? Next, I think the Earthquaker Special Cranker is hard to beat. For the beginners, I really like anything that gives them a few more options. Uh, that has the silicon and germanium diodes. So it works as a boost. It's a pretty good overdrive. It doesn't get too gainy, but I think it's a great choice for beginners. That's awesome, yeah. We need to power the pedals, so there's a lot of options there as well. Do you use yeah. a one spot thing that like daisy chains it all together because they're really affordable? Or do you get some top tier thing that costs like $500? The subject of power supplies is one that needs its whole episode and I will do that. But I need to just briefly explain what you need and quickly why you need it. You need to use isolated power. Easiest way to understand isolated power is by going back to the 1980s when pedals came with cool power supplies like this. And your power supply and pedal were one isolated unit that gets rid of potential noise issues within the circuits, within your house. You can't always do that because sometimes it gets expensive when your board is huge. And there are different options that came along specifically in the 90s, one called the one spot. The idea is that you take the transformer end, plug it into the wall, and then you can daisy chain off of it. And it's supposed to be noise free and perfect. It's just not. Just imagine with this, your brother has the flu. He hands you something to drink. You drink it, you get the flu. Then you hand the same drink to your dad. He gets the flu. Then he hands it to your mom. This is what daisy chaining does. It passes the problem, the virus, the sickness, the noise down the line. It's a big no-no. If you have to use them, or if you do use them and they work great for you, that's fine, but I'm not gonna recommend them here. I'm going to recommend a truly isolated design. The most famous flagship standard has always been the Pedal Power Line by Voodoo Lab. They make several different units. This two plus is it. Like, this is the holy grail to me. And anything Voodoo Lab makes, buy it. You can buy it, they make great stuff. Next up, you have things like the Strymon line. These are very interesting, they're very high quality. This stuff's a little more expensive though. It's gonna be hard to justify $49 or whatever this costs versus two to $300. But at the end of the day, down the line, it's gonna be worth it for you because it's gonna work and you're not gonna have problems. There are also these confusing units here. Some of them look very similar to some of the Voodoo Lab designs, and they're made in China. This is a brand called K-Line. These might actually be okay. I've never torn these open, 
Those look and they feel heavy, like there's a transformer in them for isolation. But then there's stuff like this, a brand named Skuru, I guess. This is really cheap and it says isolated power. It's not actually isolated. It's just a daisy chain internally. So it's a little bit of a bait and switch or a trick. With power supplies, if it's under a hundred bucks, I can almost guarantee you it's not isolated. I think we need to go middle of the road because the power supply is really the best investment. You're not gonna change power supplies. You shouldn't have to, you're gonna change pedals. And so I wanna use the Strymon Ohi because it has five outputs. It's a great investment. Just, just do this. For delay, I like the Boss DD7. You can get those used for under a hundred bucks, but again, options. It has a couple different types of delay. You can figure out what really works for you, what doesn't. Um, and boss pedals will survive the apocalypse. Absolutely. DD7, I didn't think about. I love to, obviously, tap tempo is great. With the pedal board itself, there's a lot of brands and every brand makes a lot of different models or options within that brand. Just find what you think you like. Don't buy a board that's too big. Get the size you need for the rig you're doing. It just makes it easier knowing you don't have a bunch of dead space or the mirror effect of that is you have too many pedals for a small board. It just depends on what you want. For this, we're gonna use a pedal train style rail board made by Mono. A pro tip here is look up the dimensions of the board you're interested in and tape it out with some painter's tape on the carpet, on a table, and take your current pedals and what you want to be on the board. Make sure it all fits. Make sure it's comfortable. You want to have enough pedal board real estate. That's a term we say in the biz because real estate's serious business. You need to have enough of it. When you get all of this stuff in place, you have the board, you have the cables, you have the pedals, you need to check the signal chain and make sure everything is exactly working the way it should. I would advise having a cable tester. These are great to have and they just save you a big headache. So you can test mic cables and all kinds of fun stuff with it. You turn it on and in this case, you have two lights. You need them both to turn on. That one's good, two green lights. So you just go through the cables test every one of them. Great. All my cables are great. I don't have to worry about them. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag stress free. Hashtag no cable issues. Nick, is there another hashtag? I think you got them all. Let's build it out, play the guitar through it, make sure it all works and make sure it all powers up. And then you can confidently fasten it to the board and know it's going to work. The power supply is here. The great thing about this supply is it runs a really strong milliamp. That means this will work on even the most fierce digital pedal in the future when you buy more expensive things that need specialized power. So in the business world, this is called a good investment. All right, we know this works. This is ready to become a pedal board. It's ready to blossom, to spread its wings, to leave the cocoon. Let's make a butterfly. Again, I think they're under a hundred bucks, but it has two kind of normal sounds and then it has the flurb. Flurb. Super fun. Somebody might start a band with flurb. They should. They should. They really should. Yeah. Next, we're going to use Velcro to attach your pedals to the board. Velcro has been around forever. It's tried and true. There's some other methods out there. They're fine as well, but it's really hard to beat how dependable and predictable this product is. Now there is an unpardonable sin. You go straight to pedal hell for this one. And it is if you put the fuzzy side on the pedal. <laughs> If I ever see any of you out in public, I'm at Costco, I'm at the car wash, I'm buying some roasted peanuts at a fair. If I ever see you and this crap's on your pedal, you're getting turned in. So first up is a pro tip. More is not better. More is actually a worse hold. More is bad, say it. More is bad. All right, we're gonna go through, we're just gonna chop off some little diddles. Look at that. These two connections are way better than the one big one because it holds it from two separate spots and it's just nice. It's nice and anchored. The other thing to get into here is considering do you Velcro the entire top of the board yet? I'm not against that. It's fine. That would be doing this. 
it'll get dirty. You'll get cat hair on it. You'll be at the beach playing like a sick gig and then sand will be in it for 400 years. So I wouldn't do that. I'll show you what I would do. I place it on there, but I don't take the adhesive back off. A pro tip on a boss pedal is I highly recommend turning the back plate upside down. A boss pedal comes with a rubber back. I would take the back off, turn it upside down, put the rubber in the pedal, and then you have a clean metal back on that. On this power supply, it's gonna go underneath and be hidden. But I need to consider a couple things. Do I want mono to be on the toe side? Do I wanna see it or does the audience wanna see it? I feel like we gotta you rep, rep the brand and put it on the front. All right audience side we have the beautiful board here we're going to do power from the inside so that's what it's going to look like inside that way you can plug in right there at the edge everybody go you and the audience do it straddle it and push it down you know it's good if you can do that so it's hard to space it properly so you center the middle pedal. So this board is 18 inches, which halved is... <laughs> that's good enough for me. Woo! I feel good knowing that's the middle of the board. Smush it. Ooh. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so let's space. And we're just gonna keep it simple. Remember, middle of the road, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna eyeball it from here using a simple, any kind of space device. I call this working man's geometry. Didn't Waylon Jennings have a song called working man's geometry? I'm gonna confidently say yes. If you want me to build your board, go to www.josh could possibly build my pedal board one day in the near future, but not probably.com. All right, that's our board. Looks pretty good. Are you at five pedals or four? I think I'm at four. Yeah, what's your fifth? I, have you heard the Mass Effect Tiny Fuzz? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like 70 bucks. I'm, I'm really picky with fuzz. I don't love a lot of fuzz, but um, it's small. You can get it customized to like one of their like tons of art choices. It has a really good low end response. I didn't suggest a fuzz, and I'm glad you did, though. I think a lot of people should try a fuzz, like, immediately and get it on their board. I wouldn't recommend fuzz off the bat to everybody, but if you are going to start with a fuzz, I like that one a lot. I think it's really forgiving. That's cool. Well, this is what I needed to know. Really good takes. Very different than mine, which is perfect. Yeah, all right, good. Awesome. Well, thanks, Josh. All right, bye-bye. So the last step, we want to feed the cables up to the pedal right angle cable going down into that hole. So I'm gonna do that a few times here and get it over with. All right, so that looks good from the top. You could be done here. I'm gonna to say to some of you, some of you aren't even middle of the road. You're just white trash garbage pedal people. And I know a few, I was that person. You can rock right, you can make a yeah. Grammy winning record. I feel like this is the stage where I go, yeah. I'll, d I'll clean those cables up later, but then never But do you it. don't, because you're writing hit songs. Yeah. Okay. Mono boards come with kits. You have zip ties and these little zip tie anchors. So let's use some of these. You can also just buy any of this at like Lowe's or Home Depot or your local hardware. We've already ruined these scissors. And you have a pretty simple problem on this board. Some boards, these big elaborate boards, you got a lot more problems. Like this is super simple. I'm gonna just pull them all to the one side here. All right, so here's one chunk. Let's put an anchor there. I'm a little more than middle of the road here, but I'm not much better. There's people that would measure this out. I'm like, whatever. Some of you are itching. Like your skin is physically ill. You're watching me do this? I know who you are, it's fine. Here we go. Don't pull it yet. Get it where you want it. I don't want to pull it like this. I'm just going to do this so it's a little more loose. Yeah, it's pretty good. We'll clip that in a minute when we're sure. We're going to do probably three of these, four of these. So now that this is on, the power uh, is still working on all the pedals. We're just going to clip these right above the zip part. This board's done. Great. You could play any style of music. 
play a stadium with this, play in your bedroom, country to metal, whatever. Just does it all. It's really simple, really affordable, and there's tons of other pedal brands that make affordable pedals as well. You don't have to overthink this stuff. You did it. You built your first pedal board, or at least you watched me build a pedal board that you could potentially win through the link in the description below. Just go down there and click that, register, and one of you lucky people will get this. If you wanna see more content like this, like and subscribe, and have a great day. I'm not a theologian, but I feel like hell has a lot of sound. Yeah, like Chubba Wamba's playing, Smash Mouth, Nickelback, Creed. That one time I gave a public talk in sixth grade, just like on repeat. On top of Chubba Wamba. I like saying Chubba Wamba. <laughs> a lot of us have struggled with our feet fat, and I'm here to invigorate an intoxicating new answer. All right. Get to work. It's real tough. Get to work. You sound like someone who's never yelled. <laughs> Do you have elbow thistles? Go, Go from harsh, <laughs> critically sandpapered elbows to smooth, gentle, soft elbows with my miracle ointment.